We give glory to God for yet another week in the land of the living, and we want to thank you for always creating the time to listen to the revelation knowledge the Lord makes available through this channel. As you listen to God again through his mouthpiece, Anthony Adifarakin, may you receive light, and may the grace for application and manifestation rest upon you in Jesus' name. Be blessed as you listen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give you glory and adoration for yet another week in the land of the living. Thank you for preserving our lives. Thanks for taking good care of us. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have come to learn at your feet this week. We pray that you speak to our hearts. We pray that you give us understanding. And we pray that you grant us the uh, ability to apply all we will be learning from you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, for this week's episode of Glenn Podcast, we're going to be uh, continuing in our series, The Finishing Grace. And uh, for this week, we're going to be looking at part eight. We've considered The Finishing Grace, part one to, uh, part one to seven. And this week, we're going to be looking at uh, part eight. And we're going to be lesson, uh, learning some lessons from uh, Apostle Paul. We're going to be learning from Apostle Paul. Philippians 3, 7 to 16 is our text. Philippians 3, 7 to 16 is our text. And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Philippians 3, 7 to 16 from NKJV. But what things were gained to me, this I have counted lost for Christ. Paul speaking. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is uh, through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature, that's verse 15, let, therefore let us as many as are mature have this mind, and if anything you think, uh, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Verse 16. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us work by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. The Lord bless his words in our heart in Jesus' name. I've just read to you Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 16. Lessons from Apostle Paul. I can tell you right now, Apostle Paul finished well. Praise God. Apostle Paul finished well. In fact, he made the announcement before he died that he had finished. He has fought a good fight. He said he finished well. He kept the faith. Okay? So what helped Apostle Paul? Want to learn. If, if Apostle Paul finished well, he had the grace to finish well, and uh, our goal is also to finish well, then we should be able to learn. How did Apostle Paul do it? What did he do? What can we learn from him so that we too can finish well? And the very first thing that comes to mind from what we just read is it was laser focused. <laughs> laser focused. Apostle Paul said, One thing I do, not two, not three, not what not 1.5. One thing I do. Laser focus. Apostle Paul, upon his conversion, started his journey in Christ Jesus very well. And being laser focused, he was able to finish well. You can look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8 for that. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. Jesus Christ got him knocked down from his horse on the way to Damascus, you know, commissioned him, told him what he needed to do. He hit the ground running, he started well, and he ended well. Because he said he only did one thing. He only did one thing. That's what he said. If you look at Philippians 3, 7 to 16, we just read. He said, this one thing I do, lesser focus, forgetting what is behind 
and reaching forth to what is ahead. That's how he was able to finish well. And he invites us to do the same. If you look at Philippians 3, 17, he asks us to join him in this example. He said, brethren, join him following my example. Join me, imitate me, do what I did and you will finish well. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. That's how Apostle Paul was able to complete his assignment. Now, let's see. Proverbs 13, 20 says, Proverbs 13, 20 says, one of the ways to become wise is by walking with wise men. That's what the Bible says. You walk with the wise, you become wise. Companion of fools shall suffer harm. Another version says, companion of fools shall suffer destruction. So if you're interested in finishing well, it's only smart for you to study and follow the examples of those who already finished well. Paul was not stuck with his past achievements. Neither was he held back by the disappointments and sufferings. All the good things in the past of Apostle Paul, he did not allow those good things to hold him back to the past. He did not allow the bad things in his past to also hold him down. Apostle Paul did not get stuck with his past achievements. He wasn't just celebrating former glory. He wasn't just, you know, celebrating his previous achievements. He achieved and he moved ahead. Even the disappointments and the sufferings he had in his past, none of those could stop him. He said, one thing I do, forgetting what's past and reaching forward to my goal in Christ. You want to finish well? Also do that one thing. That's it. If you want to finish well, do that one thing that Apostle Paul did that made him finish well. Also, forget what's past and reach forward to your goal in Christ. That's how to finish well. That's how to finish well. If all you are celebrating is how God used you five years ago, how God used you to raise one dead, you know, 15 years ago, how God manifested his glory, all you are thinking about is what God did, what God did in so many years ago, you, you are not focusing on what he's doing now, probably what he has in plan for you, for the future. You are going to be stuck in your past and you can't finish well. Because once you are stuck in your past, you can't approach your future. Because no one can drive forward looking backward. You can't be driving forward and expect to not experience a crash while looking backward. You are driving forward, you are looking backward, crash is inevitable. No one drives forward looking backward. You have to face where you're going. You have to face where you're going. Somebody has said when it comes to the past, borrow the lessons, bury the details. And I love that. Even when there are ugly situations in your past, things that are things that you're not proud of, things you did. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul persecuted the church. He wasn't proud of it. He wasn't he jailed Christians. He persecuted the church seriously. He was not proud of it. But he did not allow that to hold him back. He consented to the killing of Stephen, God's faithful servant. He did not allow that to hold him back. He said he forgot about them. He moved on to what God had for him. Even when you have bad things in your past, terrible things you have done, unspeakable things you have done, that shameful things you have done, borrow the lessons and bury the details. Borrow the lessons from there and take it to your future. Go apply it. All the details, keep them in the past. They are there. This one thing I do, I put it to you. If you must finish well the way Apostle Paul finished well, if you want to be able to say, I have fought a good fight, I have kept the face, I have finished my course, now there is a crown laid up for me, I'm going to heaven to go get my reward. You want to speak like that, like Apostle Paul did, you also must do that one thing. Forget what's past and reach forward to your goal in Christ Jesus. As you do this, it's my prayer you will not miss your mark in destiny in the name of Jesus. And the purpose of God concerning your life will come to pass and you also shall be able to end well. The grace to end well, the grace to finish well will rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's how Apostle Paul was able to finish well. He forgot what was past. He reached forward to what was ahead. That was the one thing he did. If you do that one thing, you will also finish well. Because those who work with wise men, they become wise. Do what Apostle Paul did, you are more than likely to get the result he got. And I pray God will grant us the grace to apply this in Jesus' name. 
Well, you are out there. You have not even surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Uh, we can't be talking about finishing well because you have not even started well. So you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You're going to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of your salvation. Please forgive all my sins. Save my soul and make me yours forever. I surrender my life to you today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the life of Apostle Paul. Thank you for helping him to finish well. Lord, be exalted in Jesus' name. We have heard your word. We too want to do that one thing, to forget what's past and to reach out to those things you have for us. Lord, let this grace rest upon us in the name of Jesus. For your children who have surrendered their life to Jesus, accept them in the beloved. Write their names in the book of life and also grant them the grace to do that one thing, to never be held back by their past, but to reach forward to the future you have for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. We give thanks to God for the revelation of His Word. If you said that prayer of salvation, congratulations. Your sins are now forgiven and your new life has begun. Please locate a Bible-believing church near you and start fellowshipping with other believers there. Or if you need help in learning how to live this new life in Christ Jesus, kindly send us a message through our website, www.glome.org, and we will respond accordingly. We will meet again next week for another episode if the Lord has not returned. Until then, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you.